Today we're going to be talking about something that I have been oddly quiet about ever since it came out, and that would be the Super Mario 64 PC port. If you are unfamiliar with what that is, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Super Mario 64, but ported to the PC, by fans of course, there's no way Nintendo was ever going to do it, such that it runs natively. It was a huge effort by a lot of hackers and modders and coders, and it made Super Mario 64 far more open to experimentation and tinkering. If you're wondering why it is that it took me 300 years to talk about this, the answer is pretty simple. That's how long it took me to install it. In its current state, getting the PC port of Mario 64 up and running is a very involved and sensitive process, which makes sense if you understand the logistics of it. But because of that, I think the first time I tried to play this, I missed a step and totally broke the install, and then I just got mad and gave up and went to bed. But today I figured, hey, other people have played this, so obviously it must be possible to do, so I got to it and I made it happen. Go me. Now of course Super Mario 64 was already pulled wide open by ROM hackers and the things they've been able to accomplish on regular hardware have been incredible. But naturally, a native PC port allows them far more options than the N64 was capable of. Which brings us to today's topic, that being the Render 96 project. This is an ongoing project to make Super Mario 64's graphics in-game look closer to what it looked like in the pre-rendered promotional materials. Now even if you aren't a game designer or otherwise a computer man, even you know that there's no way the game could actually look exactly as it does in the promotional material in a real-time 1996 video game. Do you see this image right here? It is entirely possible that it took at least an hour to render out using some kind of workstation. Today, if you remade this in Blender, it might take a minute if you're using Cycles, or three seconds if it's Eevee. By the way, did you guys know that when Pixar was making Monsters Inc, it took 12 hours to render a single frame? Yeah. Apparently Sully's fur was so powerful that it was killing their state-of-the-art render farms. That is crazy. This video isn't just to look at how cool the graphics are, but to put into perspective just how far technology has come. To make the models in this promotional image probably required what was, at the time, an elite PC with capabilities far greater than your dad's work computer. Today, you could probably make this on your Dell laptop. Not that it would be super easy, you'd still have to know how to do it, but it is far less of a purely technical hurdle now. Which is why we can now make Mario 64 look close to what it looks like on the box. Isn't technology so crazy? Now, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that the fan-made PC port of Super Mario 64, at least the way that I had it configured, contained some new gameplay features, like these little collectible keys and big coins. I have no idea what those do, but if I had to guess, it has something to do with Wario and Luigi, who are both playable characters now. It also allows you to play the game at 60 FPS for the first time ever, and most importantly, they brought back Blarg from the beta version. Yeah, Blarg. There was also a new end screen where Bowser is shown stealing the cake. Maybe this is the bad ending you get when you use the BLJ. That's one way to punish you for cheating. Render 96 specifically though, is entirely a graphical overhaul of the game, so unless you do other stuff to it, the gameplay is gonna be largely identical. I like to think that this is what Super Mario 64 actually looked like in the eyes of gamers who had only known Super Nintendo up to that point. If you've been watching me for a while, you probably know that I don't typically talk about graphical upgrades to existing games, not because I hate them or that I don't respect the talent and the effort required to make them, or that I'm not very fond and very proud of the work that they've done, but because I'm mostly motivated by gameplay, especially with a game like Super Mario 64, which is still, to this day, a super fun video gamey video game. But of course I have made exceptions in the past, like with Mario Kart 64 HD. This was an HD texture pack that required them to make entirely new models with which to create extremely complex and intricate high resolution sprite sheets for every single character. Render 96, if I remember correctly, actually preceded Mario Kart 64 HD, and may have even potentially inspired it. 
You got all new character models, set pieces, sprite work, texture work, everything snapping together to make the game look close-ish to what it may have looked like if the box art was playable. From what I understand, it is still a work in progress and there are minor areas where you're gonna notice some awkward geometry or textures, but they're not too distracting when it gets down to it. It's definitely worth noting that there are some features that I'm not showing you, like I'm pretty sure my computer is not equipped for ray tracing, which, yeah, that is an actual feature of the game if you play your cards right. But in the state I have it now, this is an unbelievably impressive piece of work. It is incredible just how much effort went into making it look authentic to the promotional material. The textures are so rich and sharp that it looks unrecognizable from the original game and the characters are so rounded and smoothed out with remarkable attention to detail. Yeah, it may look a little uncanny with these jacked up textures and character models with the physics and movement of an N64 game fundamentally unchanged, especially at 60 FPS, but remember, the goal was not to look realistic or even necessarily next gen. The sole purpose of this mod is authenticity to the pre-rendered materials, and that's where it delivers. Check out these Goombas, this is one of the most artistically brazen depictions of a Goomba that I have ever seen in a Mario game, and it's entirely based off this JPEG here. There is no question that the team behind this project definitely did their due diligence in researching this. The real star of the show for me, of course, is Mario. Just look at how expressive and detailed he is. The man has actual fingers instead of a white mass of polygons. You gotta love seeing his older design in 3D with something resembling actual graphics. To me, this mod is an excellent case study to demonstrate just how far technology has come since the original game came out. The promotional art was just that, still images designed to capture your imagination, everyone knowing full well there's no way the game would actually look exactly like that, running in real time on a game console. Just to think that today, an average computer can run this game with graphics comparable to what could only exist in what used to be top-notch pre-rendered images. Well, it's pretty wacky ass. Which is a compliment. I think my favorite things about this mod are the unnecessary little details strewn throughout the world. Jolly Roger Bay has these little lamps to illuminate the underwater tunnel. There are these little glowy mushrooms off of Pikmin. Little 3D bushes that look more like bumpy meatballs. Little rocks at Womp's Fortress. Door handles have reflectivity and the star sign actually extrudes from the door instead of just being painted on. Same with the item boxes. I like that exclamation mark. That is a nice exclamation mark. Not all levels have been fully reworked, but as I said, it is a work in progress and I'd love to see what comes in the future. It's always going to be fun to blow through Super Mario 64, but playing with these bizarre and very high effort visuals makes for a surprisingly freshened up experience. I really did feel like I was discovering something new by seeing just what all had been brushed up and changed, and that was half the fun. Maybe one of these days when I sell my left kidney to buy a new GPU that can actually do ray tracing, I'll revisit the game and look at the stuff that I couldn't show you today. But until then, I must return to the remaining five games of the marathon. Can you guess what they're gonna be? Well, you're gonna find out one way or another, so maybe you'd rather contain your excitement and not spoil the surprise early. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching my video.